so today's practice, I think we're going to do some, uh, we're going to work on opening the front body and doing a little uh, back bending, uh, which is not a strength for me. I, I will tell you that I have a lot of back injuries. Uh, I had stenosis, I had two herniated discs, I got disc degeneration issues. Um, so in my own practice, I do tend to um, shy away from back bends, but it doesn't mean I shouldn't do them. So uh, welcome to my little therapy session <laughs> for the next for the next hour or so. Be patient with yourself. Back bends can take a little bit of time to open up. It also uh, requires some side bending holds as well to really open up that front body. So let's get started on our backs. You maybe tuck your shoulder blades one by one underneath you. Allow your legs to be long. You can bring your hands out from your sides, palms face up. Keep those eyes open though. It's a little bit more of an active Shavasana. And begin to draw deep breaths in. And send it all the way out. You can open your mouth. Let's do an H-A. Inhale all the way in. And exhale, H-A. One more just like that. Inhale, really feel that front body open, expand. And exhale, AJ. Seal your lips. In and out through your nose. Let's start to reach your arms overhead. Point your toes. Really find that big opening. You can feel your the small of your back lift up off of the mat. And as you exhale, just let those back ribs fall down into the mat. Again, inhale, reach your arms overhead. And this time as you exhale, we're gonna to start to reach your fingertips towards your toes, lifting your head and shoulders up off of the mat. Inhale, arms reach up overhead. And exhale, send your fingertips towards your toes, head and shoulders, lift. Inhale, arms overhead, bend your knees, place the soles of your feet down on the mat, and then exhale, start to reach your fingertips towards your heels. We're gonna hold it here. So your shoulders are lifted, your head is lifted, your ribs are squeezing in, your back ribs are pressing down into the mat, your belly button is into your spine, so don't let it puff out even if it wants to. And we're gonna tap your left heel with your left fingertips, and then your right heel with your right and left and right, and left, and right. So just creating a little swivel here, squeeze, squeezing one side of the waist, and then the other, and then the other, and the other. Keep your gaze up, particularly if your head starts to hurt, supporting itself. We're just gonna go for 10, 10, nine, nine, eight, eight, seven, seven, six, six, five, five, four, four, Three, three, you got this. Two, two, one, one, release it down. Arms come overhead, head, head finds the mat. And then we'll start to reach your fingertips towards your heels. Once again, pulling those ribs in. Head is nice and soft. This time lift your hip, your knees right over your hips. Keep the belly button pulled in. Pull your low abdominals in and up. Legs are engaged, so 90 degrees at your hips, at your knees, at your toes. Resist the temptation to pull those knees in further towards your chest. Keep your fingertips reaching forward. Head and shoulders are still lifted. I know it's starting to talk, and that's okay. Hold it here. Five, four, three, two, one. Release your head and shoulders down. Arms come overhead. Big inhale here. 
As you exhale, reach those fingertips forward, peel your head and shoulders up off of the mat, keep squeezing here, and this time you're gonna bring your biceps overhead and just hold it there, but your shoulder blades still totally loose up off the mat. Hold it here, five, four, three, two, one. Relax your head and shoulders down, arms overhead. Big inhale here, you can let your arch, your back arch as you inhale. And then as you exhale, pull those back ribs down, reach your fingertips forward, keep reaching them forward. You're just gonna tap your right heel, and lift it up, or left, or toes. Heel or toes, lift it up. 10, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, try to keep that 90 degree angle. Three, two, one, knees back together, arms overhead, nice big breath. Exhale, reach your fingertips forward, peel your heart up off of the mat. Once again, shoulders are lifted, gaze is lifted, arms come up, neck, biceps next to your ears. Shoulder blades still off of the mat. Tap your right toes, and then your left, and then your right, and then your left. Going for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax your head and shoulders down on the mat. We're gonna pull those knees in, wrap your forearms around your shins. You can rock a little left and right. And then release your feet down to the mat. And we're just gonna let those knees come over to the right. You can extend your left arm long to the left. So just find a stretch along that side body. And then we'll come back through center. We'll send your knees over to the left, gaze to the right. Right arm goes long if it isn't already. Come back to center, pull your knees in. We're gonna rock and roll all the way up to a tabletop position. Knees underneath your hips, wrists underneath your shoulders. Inhale, find your first cow pose, stretch out that front body. And as you exhale, round your back, tuck your chin. Inhale again, arching into cow. And exhaling into cat. Three more rounds, move at your own pace, you don't have to follow me. On your next exhale, take it all the way to downward facing dog. Hips high and back. Pedal out your heels, bending one knee and then the other. Let your head be heavy, shake it out. No, not it, yes. Lift up your heels as high as they'll go, stretch out your toes, and exhale, heels find the mat. Inhale, lift them up. Exhale, lower them down. Inhale, lift them up. Exhale, lower them down. And then we'll bring that right foot between your hands and drop your left knee. So we're gonna try and keep a little 90 degree angle. So usually I'm a little bit more, when I come into Anjana Yasana, I've got a little bit of a wider stance. But this time I want you to bring that, uh, make the space a little bit um, less dramatic. So you've got 90 degrees of that right hip and your right knee. Curl your left toes under. We're gonna bring that left arm up and over. Plant it on your left heel and reach your right arm towards the back of the room. So you'll feel a pretty good stretch here along that left um, quadricep maybe, or on your left leg, as well as a little bit of an opening in that front body of your heart and your shoulders, and even the right side of your rib cage, your intercostals there. 
And then push into that left foot as you reach it back up. Untuck your left toes. You can wiggle that right foot forward slightly and now start to drop your hips forward. Finding a stretch along that left hip flexor. We're gonna get into the psoas here. So you can keep your right forearm down on that right thigh if you like. We're gonna reach your left arm straight up. Find just a little bit of a back bend, not a huge back bend, a little bit. Keep those hips moving forward. And then we're gonna to start to tip that left, those left fingertips over to the right. Now see if you can maintain this opening as you just roll your rib cage open to the left. Try not to take your left hip with you. If you feel kind of a really uncomfortable something stretching like deep into your abdominal wall, that's your psoas. Take some nice deep breaths here. and then come back to center, release your fingertips down, shift your hips back, flex your right toes and fold over that right leg. Bend into that right knee, plant your hand, send your right foot back to meet your left and find your plank. We're gonna find five chaturangas here. If you need to drop to your knees, drop to your knees. But rock forward on your toes, we'll lower halfway. Inhale, push it right back up. Exhale, lower halfway. Inhale, push it up. We've got three, two, one. Send it back, downward facing dog. Heels reach for the mat, push the backs of your legs to the back of the mat, let your head be heavy, rooting down through your inner hand. And then we'll step that left foot between your hands. Again, a little bit shorter than usual. It's almost in a King Arthur stretch here. If you've never done that with me, that's super fun. We'll do that sometime in the studio when we eventually meet face to face again, I hope. <laughs> We're gonna reach that right arm all the way up and then bring it over to your right heel behind you and reach your left arm to the back of the room pushing your hips forward again, maybe finding a stretch along that right thigh or your left side of your rib cage, or your heart, or your shoulders. Just try to open up as much as you can. And then we'll come back up to stand, to center. Untuck your right toes, maybe step your left foot forward, a footprint, and allow your hips to start to sink forward getting a stretch along that right hip flexor. Then we'll take our psoas stretch here. So bring your left forearm, just place it on top of that left thigh. We're gonna reach your right arm up and start to lift your heart. Just find a very subtle back bend. It's more of just a, an opening. Start to send that right hand slightly over to the left. And then it's a small little opening, a small little rotation of your rib cage to the right. Keep those hips moving forward. Try not to take your right hip with you. Finding a stretch along that right psoas. And then we'll come back to center, release your hands on either side of that left foot. Shift your hips back, flex your left toes, fold over that left leg. And then we'll bend into that left knee, step your right foot forward and hang for ragdoll. Feet are hip distance apart. You can tuck your pinkies in your elbow creases. Let your head be heavy, shake it out. No, not at yes. Release your fingertips down to the mat. We're gonna heel toe those feet together. Soften your knees and we'll roll it up one vertebrae at a time. Coming all the way up, reaching your arms up overhead. Interlace your hands, 
And we'll find a little TikTok action here. So just starting to get into that, those, that side body, shifting your hips, opposite direction of your hands, finding a little bit of dynamic stretching here. So dynamic stretching is as we, is finding the breath and the movement and moving through your range of motion that way. Static stretching is when we just get there and we hold, right? There are benefits to both. After the next time you go left, pause in the center. Pick up all 10 toes, spread them apart, bring your arms slightly behind your head. Your kneecaps are lifted, your quads are engaged, your glutes are engaged, your legs are completely strong, your ribs are squeezing together even though your arms are behind your head. Inhale, lift your rib cage up away from your pelvis. And on an exhale, start to draw a line over to the right. Good to push your hips to the left. Invite your right shoulder forward. Invite your left hip forward. And hold it, squeeze it each breath, opening a little bit more. Holding it for five, four, three, two, one. Come back to center. Arms stay strong and straight. Reaffirm the strength of your legs, the engagement of your legs, the engagement of your core, the squeezing in of your ribs, the arms just slightly behind you. Lift it up as you inhale. And as you exhale, start to draw that line over to the left, pushing your hips to the right. Glutes stay engaged, weight stays just slightly towards your heels. See if you can invite that left shoulder forward and your right hip forward. For five, four, three, two, one. Come back up to center. Release your hands behind your back. Roll your shoulders back, start to send your hips forward, lifting your ribs, lifting your heart, lifting your chin, pushing your hips forward. Weight stays in your heels, maybe even dropping your head, looking behind you. Five, four, three, two, one. Come back up to center. Reach your arms up and exhale, fold. Bring your fingertips down to the mat. Allow your head to be heavy. We're gonna lift those heels, bringing your forehead to your knees. Plant your hands down on the mat, and then allow your, hip, your heels to find the mat, your hips to start to lift. Keep that connection between your ribs and your thighs. Straighten your legs as much as you can, but don't lose that connection. Come back into your little ball here. Lift your heels, tuck your chin, forehead finds your knees and then release your heels down to the mat. Hips lift, hands stay planted. Come back to your little ball. One more time. Heels are lifted, chin is tucked, forehead to your knees. Hands stay grounded, heels find the mat. Start to lift those hips, folding in half. And then release your feet to the back of the mat and find your plank. Adjust your hands as needed, those shoulders right over your wrists. Rock forward on your toes. We're gonna lower all the way down to the mat for five, four, three, two, one. Belly touches the mat, untuck your toes. Fingertips are just behind your shoulder heads. Elbows are back like grasshopper wings, but it's as though there's a magnet between your elbows. Push into the tops of your feet. As you inhale, roll your shoulders back, peel your heart up off of the mat. There is no weight in your hands. You can stretch your chin forward, or you can keep it neutral if that hurts your neck, and release it down. We're gonna do another baby cobra. As you inhale, push your feet down into the mat, roll your shoulders back. No weight in your hands. Come up one more set of ribs, nice and high. Now float your hands for five, four, three, two, one. Lower it down, curl your toes under, send it back, downward facing dog. 
Push your left heel down onto the mat. We'll lift that right leg up behind you. Hands actively pushing forward. So melting your heart to your left thigh, pointing your right toes and start to stack that right hip on top of your left, but square off your shoulders. That means lifting your left shoulder as high as your right. And we'll bring that right foot between your hands. Find your warrior one. Left heel finds the mat. Hands come together, gaze comes up, interlace your hands behind your back. We'll find a humble warrior. Lifting your heart and your chin and your gaze, and then hinging over that right leg. Your right shoulder can land on that right knee or it can come past, maybe bringing your right ear all the way down to your right ankle. And then push into that right heel, reach it all the way up, find your warrior one again and open it up for warrior two. Tuck your left hip under you as, bend into, as you bend into the right knee, looking out over that right middle finger. Make sure you can see that right big toe so that that right knee isn't caving in. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And exhale, windmill it down. We're gonna take any vinyasa you like. You're welcome to do chin stands. You're welcome to take it upside down in some fashion. You're welcome to skip vinyasas altogether, by the way. That's always an option as well. Push your right heel down into the mat. Lift your left leg up, three-legged dog. Arms strong and straight. Point those left toes. Push forward with your hands. Melt your heart back. Start to stack that left hip on top of your right, but then lift that right shoulder as high as your left. It's just a lower half twist. And then we'll bring that left foot between your hands and find your warrior one. Reaching your arms up overhead. Interlace your hands behind your back, opposite thumb on top if you can remember which one. It's the way that feels weird. Lift your heart, lift your chin, lift your gaze, and then we'll hinge over that left leg. Arms come overhead. Again, that left shoulder can rest on your knee or it can come to the inside, but then scoot your hips to the midline. For three, for two, for one, push into that left heel, reach your arms up overhead. And then we'll find our warrior two. Looking out over that left hand, tuck your right hip underneath, make sure you can see that left big toe. Also make sure there's some engagement in your lower abdominals. Sitting a little bit lower. Inhale, reverse. And exhale, windmill it down. Move through your vinyasa any way you want it to look. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Bend your knees, look forward. We'll float to the top of the mat. Lengthen and fold. Inhale, push through your feet. Reach all the way up. Interlace your hands. Ardha Chandrasana, Ghosh style, round two. So feel those feet before we even get started. Pick up all 10 toes, place them down onto the mat. Actively pushing down. Feel that lift of your kneecaps. Feel your legs engaged. Squeeze your glutes. Lift your pubic bone. Pull your ribs in. Now hold that as you bring your arms just slightly behind you. Strong arms. And we'll come over to the right. Stop at that first place where you get a little stuck. And then using your breath, to find this opening, inviting your right shoulder forward, inviting your left hip forward, squeezing that right side of the waist. Arms stay strong and straight. Fight to keep them straight. Push your hips to the left, holding it here. Five, four, three, two, one. Come back to center. Reaffirm the strength of your arms, the strength of your legs, the strength of your core. Lift it up. And we'll bring those arms over to the left, squeezing the left side of your waist, allowing the right side to open it up. 
Inviting your left shoulder forward, your right hip forward. Pushing your hips out to the right. Strong, straight arms. Five, four, three, two, one. Come back up. Keep your arms where they are unless you have low back injuries. Then feel free to support your spine by bringing your hands behind you. Start to drop your head back. Weight is going to stay in your heels, but you're going to send your hips forward as you start to draw a line behind you. Five, four, three, two, one. Come back up. And we'll come all the way down and find a forward fold. Bring your hands down to the mat. Pick up your heels. Tuck your chin. Bring your forehead down to your knees. Plant your hands down onto the mat. Keep that connection between your ribs and your thighs. Let your heels come down to the mat and start to lift your hips up to the sky. And then bring it down again. Find that ball. We've got two more. Tuck your chin. Heels go down, hips go up. And bring it down, one more. Heels go down, hips go up. This time bring your hands behind you. Maybe tuck your fingers below your heels. Using the strength of your arms to help you find that, that fold for three, for two, for one. Bring your fingertips just in front of your feet. You can even keep your hands flat. Find a half lift. Lengthen and fold. One more. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, half lift. And fold, Uttanasana. Step your feet to the back of the mat and find your plank. Broaden your collarbones, strong legs. Gaze is, gaze is just a few, it's right below your face, right? So it's probably six inches in front of your fingertips. See if you can broaden your collarbones, almost like you're a turtle with the head coming out of your shell, right? Reaching through the top of your head. Just three more breaths. Your quads are engaged, but so are your glutes. Your ribs are pulled in. We're going to slowly lower for five, four, three, two, one. Belly finds the mat. Bring your fingertips out from your sides, right out from your shoulders. Elbows are pointing straight up. Feet are gonna push down into the mat. You start to push into your fingertips and lift your whole torso up off the mat, squeezing your shoulder blades on your back. You can lift your chin if that feels nice. And then release it down. One more, just like that. Exhale your air out. As you inhale, roll your shoulders back. Start to push, start to lift. Hip points stay on the mat and release it down. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders and push it back to a soft child's pose. Toes together, knees out wide. We're gonna thread the needle here. So coming down, bringing your right side of your forehead down to the mat. Bring that right arm through underneath your left palms, face up. We're not staying too long, don't get too comfortable, just finding a quick little stretch here. And we'll find the other side. Right hand forward, left arm through. Bring that left hand forward. Curl your toes under and find your downward facing dog. Inhale your right leg up behind you, three-legged dog. We're gonna open up the hip, this time option to flip your dog. Coming onto the outside of that left foot, 
reach your right arm up and over. And then we'll bring that right hand down, bring your right foot between your hands and windmill it up for warrior two. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And exhale, side angle, right hand down, left hand up. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, unsupported side angle. Send both hands forward. Really bring your attention to this right hip crease, making it nice and deep. Try not to roll that left shoulder forward, but really finding that opening, anchoring down through the outside of your left foot. For three, for two, for one. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And exhale, coming into a bind. Bring that right hand forward and then be underneath that right leg. Bring your left hand behind you, we'll grab hold. And then we'll start to look, shift your gaze down to that right foot. Start to walk that left foot forward, keeping that bind if it's available to you. Start to lift and stand up. I'm afraid I have a torn hamstring so I can't extend that leg, but if you don't, Go for it, find your bird of paradise. And then we'll come back, meet in your bind. Find your side angle. Inhale, reverse. And exhale, windmill it down. Any vinyasa you like, again, maybe you just take a little hop or make it bigger, your choice. Landing in your downward facing dog. Inhale your left leg up, open up the hip. This time option to flip your dog. Maybe rolling onto the outside of that right foot, bringing your left foot behind you and sending your left fingertips forward. Big stretch on that left side. Then bring your left hand down, left foot between your hands and windmill it up for warrior two. Inhale, reverse and exhale, side angle. Inhale, reverse, and exhale, unsupported side angle. Both fingertips reaching forward, deep crease. That left knee is right over your left ankle. Roll your right shoulder back. Use the strength of your core. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, reverse. This time, finding your bind. Right hand behind you, left arm underneath. Walking that right foot forward. And starting to stand up. Woo, shaky. <laughs> they can't all be winners. <laughs> Let's see if I can stand up. Oh, here we go. That hammy gives me lots of problems. Straightening your leg and come on back. Find your side angle. Inhale, reverse. And exhale, windmill it down. Moving through your vinyasa, whatever you want it to look like, right? Find your downward facing dog. Bend your knees, look forward. We're gonna float to the top of the mat. Lengthen your heart forward. And exhale, fold. Inhale, push through your feet, reach it all the way up. And exhale, hands to your side. Coming into Garudasana pose, our eagle. So inhale, arms up. We're gonna bring that left arm underneath your right. Palms together. Sit low into your chair. Hi, Sydney. Bring that left leg up high over your right. Looking for a single or double wrap, it's way more important that you try and line up your elbows and your knees. So for most of us, that means knees are gonna go to the left a little bit. Pull everything in, squeeze everything into the midline. We're gonna start to hinge at the hips, bringing those forearms parallel to the ground. Unwind that left leg, send it straight back for your Eagle Airplane. Lifting up from your inner left thigh. 
taking this into your half moon. Right fingertips down, left fingertips up. <laughs> and then we'll step that left foot forward to meet your right. Hips low, arms high, find your chair pose. And we'll bring those hands to heart center and twist to the right. Right shoulder rolls back, hands together, really push that right hand down into your left. You can open up your arms, left fingertips down, right fingertips up. Bring your hands back together. We're gonna look down at your feet and just pick up your left heel and bring it into your hips. A little flamingo pose, start to send that left leg straight back. Finding your balance. And then we'll drop your left foot to the back of the mat. Land in your twisted crescent. Inhale, arms come up to center. And exhale, hands find the mat. We're gonna take a left side plank. Some of you are gonna grab that right big toe and open it up for Vashisthasana. Or you can just lay that right foot on top of your left. Hold for three, two, one. Right hand comes down, vinyasa. We'll meet in down or facing dog. Bend your knees, look forward, float to the top of the mat. Lengthen your heart forward. And exhale, fold. Inhale, push through your feet, reach it all the way up. Gargasana, left side, right arm underneath your left. Squeeze everything down, sit into your chair. We'll bring that right leg high up over your left. Use the strength of your upper back to lift your heart. Sit a little bit lower. And we'll start to hinge at the hips. Bringing your forearms parallel to the ground. Unwrap that right leg. Send it straight back. Find your eagle airplane. Think about lifting from your inner right thigh. We'll unwind. Find your half moon. and step your right foot to meet your left, hips low, arms high, Utkatasana, chair pose. Hands to heart center, we'll twist to the left. Left hand pushes down into your right, roll that left shoulder back, knees are even, hips are even. You can open up your arms if you like. And then we'll bring your hands back together if they're opened. You're gonna shift your gaze down to your feet, pick up your right heel and bring it into your hips. Start to send that right leg straight back and step it to the back of the mat and land in your twisted crescent. Inhale, center, both arms reach up and we'll bring your hands down to the mat. We'll take a right side plank, so some of you might grab that left big toe and open it up. For three, for two, for one. Bring your left hand down and move through your vinyasa. Push it through and send it back. Drop your forearms and we'll find a dolphin pose. Elbows no wider than your shoulders. Pull your belly button into your spine. Pushing your forearms forward, not just down. So really actively pushing your forearms forward, melting your heart back. Finding a calm in your breath and your thoughts. about 
about five more breaths here. Maybe even walking those toes a little bit closer to your forearms, to your elbows, and then still pointing your pelvis up, pushing your hands down and forward. Your head is heavy, whatever you're carrying around, let it go. And then push into your hands and find your downward facing dog. Step your right foot to the outside of that right hand. Drop your left knee. We'll point those right toes out. We're coming out into a lizard pose. So if it's available to you and you want to come down to your forearms, as long as you don't have to round your back to make that happen, go ahead. So those hips are reaching forward. Your heart is reaching forward. Your right knee can fall open to the side. If you need to stay on your hands, if that's a better stretch for you, that's a, it's a great place to work. I always find a little organic movement. I, get, I tend to be pretty tight in my hips. I'm a runner. So uh, it's just part of the deal. So I do a lot of swaying left and right when I'm in a lizard pose. You don't have to, but that's just what works for me. And bring your hands back onto the mat. If you're down on your forearms, plant your left hand right below that left shoulder. Bring your right hand to the inside of that right thigh. You can just lay here, or if you're pretty open, you can start to push that right thigh away from you. Be really careful, that's a pretty intense stretch. And just feel free to let that left hip roll right under you. And then if it's available to you, you can reach that right hand behind you. Just pick up that left foot and grab it and then rotate even more. So lifting your heart, lifting your gaze, finding a crab pose. This is a pretty intense quad stretch. Pulling that left foot in any amount. Release your foot. Bring your right hand down to the mat. We're gonna heel toe that right foot over to the left side of your mat and find a pigeon pose. So try to square off your hips. And we're gonna bring that left hand, place it right onto your left ankle. We're gonna bring your right hand, place it onto your right thigh. We're starting to push and lift your heart and lift your chin. Still trying to roll that left hip down. And then release your hands forward. You can stay here, you can come down onto your forearms. You can make two fists and lay your head down. You can lay it all the way out if you're pretty uh, happy. If you need to intensify the stretch, you can bring that right heel closer to the front of your mat if you need to lower the intensity, you can pull that right heel in towards your hips. And this is one of those poses that is about surrender, right? This is, you're not forcing it, you're not trying to you know, manhandle your body into a certain shape. Your job is to simply breathe and let go and let gravity and time do all the work. If you ever feel this in your knee, back off. And we'll bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Curl your left toes under and send that right leg straight back. Maybe make some big circles with that right leg. And bring your right foot down. Step your left foot to the outside of that left hand. Bring your right knee down and start to point those left toes out about 45 degrees and coming into your lizard pose here. So you can bring your forearms down to the mat if that feels good. 
You can let that left knee fall open to the left, rolling onto the outside of that left foot, if that feels good. I like to find some movement here. You don't have to. And if you're down on your forearms like I am, come down, come onto your hands, plant your right hand right below your right shoulder. We'll bring that left hand, lay it on top of your left thigh. You can stay right here, or you can start to push that left thigh away from you. Again, you know, moving mindfully, carefully. Feel free to let that right hip roll under you. Reach your left hand behind you. If it's available to you, you can pick up that right foot, pull it in any amount, and then roll your heart up to the sky. Lift your chin. Then release that right foot. You're gonna heel toe that left foot over to the right side of your mat and sit up tall for half pigeon pose. And bring your right hand to your right ankle, bring that left hand to your left thigh and just start to push and lift your heart, pushing into the top of that right foot. Nice big breath and on an exhale, let everything go and fall into your pigeon pose whether it's on your forearms or, or even still up on your hands, it's a great place to be as well. Just find a place where you can let go, where you're not, where your jaw doesn't hurt from gritting your teeth, <laughs> but that you can surrender. down on your forearms, plant your hands, curl your right toes under, and we'll send that left leg back. And maybe make some nice big movements with that left leg. And then bring your shins down to the mat. And we're gonna come up into a camel pose. So placing the tops of your feet down into the mat, your knees are hip distance apart, so are your feet. And we're gonna try and get all 10 toes to press down into the mat before we start to find a back bend. So for lots of us, that means we need to send a special invitation to our pinky toes to invite them to the party. So we want just a little bit of an internal rotation of those femurs. Bring your hands behind you. You can bring them pinky to pinky. You can bring them thumb to thumb. So in Bikram or Ghosh, um, tends to be pinky to pinky. In Ashtanga, you tend to walk your hands down the backs of your legs. You can even bring your hands to heart center. So I am not too picky about what you do with your hands. But start to send your hips forward. So to lift your ribs, lift your heart, lift your chin. We're gonna do two rounds. So maybe this first round, all you're doing is finding space. Keep sending those hips forward. If you wanna drop your hands behind you, one, and then the other, you can. But then if you have your heels, start to push your hips forward. Maybe look behind you, keeping your eyes open. Keep pushing them forward. Five, four, three, two, and one, slowly make your way up. Head is the last to lift. And sit on your heels. Knees together, ankles together. Interlace your hands, push the palms of your hands forward around your back. We're gonna do another round of camel in a moment. We're gonna take a little stretch first. Then start to send your hands up over to the right. 
grounding in through the center, forward over to the left, and back up, and then switch directions. Go over to the left, rounding as you reach them forward, over to the right, and up, and then come back up onto your shins. Release your hands down. Knees, hip distance, you can bring them a little bit wider if you like. This time not too wide, but just maybe an inch or two wider. Bring your hands behind you or to any hand position you like. Start to push into those feet. Start to send your hips forward. Start to lift, find that big lift energy. Up, 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 up. You can bring your hands behind you. Once you get your heels, start to push those hips forward. Finding that huge opening, squeeze your glutes. It's gonna help you relax your front body, your psoas, your abdominal wall. Five, four, three, two, one. Release your heels. Bring it all the way up. Bring your feet together, bring your ankles together, bring your knees together, bring your pinkies into your hip creases. Middle fingers touch, tuck your chin round your back, bring your forehead all the way to your knees. And then bring your hands down to the mat. We're gonna curl your toes under and take this right into a garland pose. So coming onto the balls of your feet, lift your knees up off of the mat, then spread them out wide and send your hands forward. So this is kind of like um, a happy baby, but on your feet. It's maybe just a little bit more of an intense low back stretch, which is what we're looking for. Just let your head be heavy. If you love taking the balancing variation of this pose, you can bring your hands to cup your heels and then use that as leverage to find an even more intense stretch, tucking your chin and bringing your forehead down to the mat. And then we'll bring those knees down Cross your ankles and find a seat. Bring the soles of your feet together. Bring your pinkies, interlace your hands around the pinky sides of your feet. Use your thumbs to open up those feet like a book. We'll bring those elbows tight in to your waist as you reach your heart forward. Nice flat spine, Baddha Konasana A. And we'll sit up tall, tuck your chin round your back, bring your forehead down to your big toes. Sitting up nice and tall. We'll bring that left heel over to the outside of your right hip. We'll step that left uh, right foot over to the outside of your left knee. Sit up nice and tall. You can use your hands to sit, lift your hips. Find a nice even foundation. Bring your right hand behind you, nice close into your body. Lift your heart. Reach your left arm up, and we'll bring that left elbow to the outside of your right knee. Trying to sit up as tall as you can. That's the first thing. The rotation is secondary. unwind and switch. Bring your right heel outside of your left hip. Step your left foot over. Sit up nice and tall. Bring your left hand behind you and reach your right arm up and over. Each inhale, see if you can lift up, find space, and as you exhale, just surrendering into that rotation.
and then we'll unwind. Find a nice, easy cross-legged position. If that's um, not comfortable for you, you can find a hero's pose. I'm gonna do 10 breaths here. Uh, I was reminded of this breath, uh, breathing exercise uh, from my friend Margot's post last week. Um, I hadn't done it in a couple of years and I love it. So it's 10 breaths. There's a little hand mudra that goes with each breath. And uh, <laughs> I, uh, I'll tell you what to do with each breath. So with the first one, bring your left thumb, your left index finger together. Big inhale here. And exhale it out. Next breath, left thumb, left middle finger together. Big inhale. And exhale it out. Number three, left thumb, ring finger together. Big inhale. And exhale it out. Number four, left thumb, pinky finger together. Inhale. And exhale it out. Number five, left hand comes to your belly. Big inhale. And exhale it out. Number six, right thumb, index finger together. Big inhale. Exhale it out. Number seven, right thumb, middle finger together. Big inhale. And exhale it out. Number eight, right thumb, ring finger together. Big inhale. And exhale it out. Number nine, right thumb, pinky finger together. Big inhale. And exhale it out. Right hand to your heart, big inhale. Bring your hands together. Call to mind something for which you are grateful. Hold it, keep it with you. Grateful for each of you who joined me this morning. Namaste, yogis. <laughs>